Welcome to Voice of the Inland Empire, your weekly adventure into the who, what, where, and why of our Southern California communities. Now normally we're coming to you from my favorite place in the world, Charlie Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. But today we're coming from my home because we're about to go out on the road to downtown Ontario, the Civic Center, where we're going to meet with Deborah Dorst Prada, who is Councilwoman and Mayor Pro Tem, and we're going to talk about all things Ontario, past, present, and future, including the fact that the airport is coming back home. It's going to be a great conversation, so don't go away. We will be right back. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. This is a wonderful place with a broad menu, variety, great drinks, great fun, and marvelous people. They have weekly specials. These are my favorites. Check out their Monday night $5.99 steak dinner. How can you go wrong? They have specials virtually every night of the week. And then they have entertainment going on all the time, from trivia contests to karaoke to dancing to some of the best cover bands you'll ever hear on Fridays and Saturday nights. Check them out on Yelp. Check them out on Facebook or come on by and say you heard about them on Voice of the Inland Empire. I love it so much here. This is where we're shooting the show, right here from the bar at Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. Come on by any evening. Who knows, you may just see me here having dinner and a drink. We are on location at the fabulous City of Ontario Civic Center, coming to you from City Hall, and we are joined today by Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem, Deborah Dorst Prada. Debbie, thank you for joining us. I am so excited to be chatting with you. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. And you know what, what originally made me want to reach out to you is when I heard that this year is the City of Ontario's 125th anniversary. And that's just like cool. It is very exciting to think that the City of Ontario has been around for 125 years. George Chafee came back here in 1891 and he looked up at the top of the mountains there and he walked up there and he laid out the whole city in a grid system so that the water flows and it all started from there. And there was, a, I believe, a mule or horse-drawn trolley that went up and down Euclid. Yes, he did. He uh, put the trolley up there. I was part of um, the uh, electrical system, so uh, it was fun to have that there too. So. And you look 125 years later. And while a lot of cities and municipalities of all types are struggling financially, Ontario has made some really, really good strategic decisions over the years. You can blame that all on a fabulous city manager named Greg Devereaux. Um, back when he came on board, he really put this fiscal house in order here. And he, of course, as many people know, is now the CEO for the county of San Bernardino. Yes, very much so. Back in those days, they didn't budget the way that he liked, and so he changed those things where we now set aside money for replacement of vehicles, replacement of equipment, and so now a replacement of facilities and the roofs. And so all those now are taken in consideration when you do your annual budget. You will f maintain your facility. You will set aside, like the police officers, they set aside money for 20 new cars every year. They set aside money so in three years they can afford a new helicopter. So all of those great budgeting things were put in place and that's what's made us so successful. So we don't wonder where the money's coming from to get all those 
great things done. I think the budgeting is an important part of it, but I think back to when Ontario Mills first wanted to come into this market, and they talked to more than one city, but Ontario had the insight to say, let's make this happen. And then fast forward to what, seven and eight years ago now, you guys built an arena, the Citizens Business Bank Arena, without a penny coming from taxpayer dollars. And those were the years of redevelopment, and that's what made everything happen, and I really wish we could have that back. So the mills, the arena, a lot of the improvements all over the city, especially in the lower income areas, we were able to build some low income housing with some of that redevelopment housing set aside money. Uh, we did. We made fabulous use of our re redevelopment money, and I, and I really wish we could have it back. <laughs> well, but that aside, you guys are still doing things to revitalize the city, and especially the downtown area. Just, uh, and I love this because it seems to be missing from our society from a cultural perspective. The culture, the museums, the activities. What else going on with that? Well, I have to blame that all on staff because they did a fabulous job of getting some grants. And because of the grants that they were able to go after, we were able to get town, the new park at um, town center there. So with the amphitheater. And now we were able to take the concerts that were on Euclid Avenue at the small bandstand. We were able to move them over to the fabulous uh, amphitheater. And the concerts, are just, they're attracting 1,500, 2,000 people wow. every Wednesday night. And um, we're doing an absolutely wonderful job with that new park. And what about some of the museums? Um, we also have another grant that did our conservation park out front, and so the children out front, and then we all have some of our first public art now, too. So those grants allowed us to, Andrea Brinites did a fabulous mural on the back of the amphitheater. Um, some other artists did some new stuff in the, uh, the uh, conservation park, and we also received another grant for the museum where we're going to be redoing the landscaping all the way around it and putting up museum signs. And I can't wait for everybody to see these signs because they're just the bomb. Nice. So I'm excited about So that. for those that may not be familiar, what kind of museum is it? We actually have three museums in the city. The first would be the City Museum, which is the Museum of History and Art. So we have the History of Ontario there. We have the Gym of the Foothills exhibit that explains everything that's going on. And then we have a section of the museum that rotates out different art and, and that goes on throughout the year. And then the Chafee Museum of Art and History uh, no, Chafee Muse Community Museum of Art um, was a partner back to, started here in the 50s with us, um, and they were housed with the City Museum, but they got too big, we got too big, so they went up to um, Rancho for a while, now they're back home where they belong, and um, they're just been fabulous. The connection between the two museums, the connectivity, in fact, we're going to be having an absolutely fabulous um, art show in uh, February of 17. It's going to be a Miller Sheets, Tony Sheets, and Rick Kaufman exhibit, which will be nothing like the Inland Empire in Southern California has ever seen. Wow. So. And you know, I love, you know, the city is always doing these big events. Um, recently, I was out at the Huck Finn Jubilee, which was put mm -hmm. on by the Greater Ontario Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I know coming up right around the corner is the Route 66 cruising event. Yes, September. Um, it's either the second or third weekend. I can't remember which, but it's a three-day event. They're still taking sign-ups, so um, please register your car and please come on by. We'd uh, love to have you uh, there. Uh, and it's all up and down. You guys close off Euc a, a section of Euclid Boulevard. From Holt all the way up to I Street. I mean, it's amazing. I've, I've been last year and the year before. And it's just as far as the eye can see. And there's cars and vendors and booths and, of course, the, the carnival food. That I hate you guys for. <laughs> um, but just all kinds of fun stuff for everyone in the family. Well, we got great bands and great entertainment. And we usually get one good act for that Saturday night to entice everybody to come on down. So. And what does it cost to show up at that? Not a darn thing. <laughs> I love that. I mean, just show up, bring the family, especially in the evening. It's cooled off. It's nice outside. So we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to talk about some of the other initiatives that you have going on, especially about your Promise College program and some other things. Very cool. So don't go away. We will be right back.
Hi, this is Corey Chalmers, host of the TV show Hoarders and president of Sterically Inc. 5% of the population suffers from hoarding behaviors. Are you or a loved one overwhelmed with clutter? If so, let our caring and compassionate specialists support you every step of the way, drama free. Give us a call at 1 800 Hoarders for a free estimate or visit hoarders.com. Stericlean has offices nationwide to assist you. Please call us at 1 800 Hoarders. That's 1 800 462 7337. Normally, we are coming to you from Charlie's Stars and Stripes, one of my favorite places to hang out. In fact, many nights you'll find me there having dinner and a glass of wine. But today, we are honored to be coming to you from the City of Ontario Civic Center and City Hall, where we are joined by Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem, Deborah Dorse Prada. So Debbie, we talked about so many fascinating things in the last segment, but you guys have a new initiative that I think is beyond cool, and it's all about keeping kids in school, or at least getting them to college. Yes, um, Ontario for the past two, three years has developed a uh, Promise Scholar Program, and uh, the Ontario Montclair School District has been the, the big one that's been putting this together, where they start talking to the kids about going to college at fifth grade, and they keep talking to them about it in every grade, and they take them to the junior colleges or to the, to the state schools or even to some of the UCs so they can actually see, feel, and touch what going to college actually does. And so what we've done here in the city of Ontario is this year in the budget, we've put $125,000 in the budget for kids that have lived in Ontario for two years prior to high school graduation, we will pay for two years of tuition wow. to the JC of their choice. That is awesome. And you know, you and I have talked about this before. Tradition, the traditional college path isn't necessarily right for everyone, but um, like, for example, Chafee College has some wonderful certification programs. Get your AA, get certified uh, in a trade. Very much so. If you want to become a police officer or a, a fireman or you have your heart set on something else, if a JC, junior college, that has been certified by the Western schools will, will, and you're an Ontario resident graduating from high school, we're going we're gonna to get you there. So you just got to do the work and we're going to help you pay for some of that bill. I love that. You know, I, I had that discussion with both of my kids. In fact, my daughter is off to UCLA next year mm -hmm. um, where she got a full scholarship Wonderful. because dad can't afford UCLA. Um, so I'm kind of tooting my own horn. But she graduated from her high school with a 4.8. Wow. In our day, first time I saw that, I thought it was a typo. Honey, there's something <laughs> wrong with your report card. <laughs> no, dad, they're AP classes. <laughs> but I told my kids uh, early on, I said, I'm not going to force you to go to college. It's your choice college or death, but I want it to be your call. So, and they both chose college, go figure. My son and I sort of have a similar thing where I was putting away money in account, mm -hmm. you know, for him to go to college. And then in high school, he says, oh, mom, what if I decide to go, if I don't go to college? I said, that's my new Rick Corvette. So let's, let's, let's you're not going to get to do anything with it. So, that's so college or mom gets a, a red, a red vet. Your right. call. You totally go. up to you. Yes. I, I love that. Now, something else that I know everyone that's watching this is probably just waiting for me to ask how exciting we are getting our airport back. Yes, and we are so close. Um, can the uh, House office, the House um, and the federal government last week gave us permission to use. The so the House of Representatives passed the bill. To get the passenger facility fees for us to be able to use them to pay at Los Angeles to get the airport back. And so now we just have to get the Senate to agree to that too. The problem is that the FAA mandates that all monies made at the airport has to stay at the airport. So we had to get the Congre Congress to agree for us to use this money for that purpose. To pay off the debt of right. purchasing the airport. Right. So in, in a broader sense, what does this mean to Inland Empire residents? What, how is this gonna impact us for better or, or worse over the next number of years? I'm assuming better. Well, part of the problem with Los Angeles having our airport for so long is they didn't utilize the full land that they could have used. I mean, the old General Electric site. And the they didn't promote site. it much. They kept promoting the LA. Once the economy tanked, they completely stopped promoting Very the Ontario so. airport. So we're going to um, put out the RFPs out there for the business sector to come in and start leasing and renting the uh, facilities on site so then that we can in turn 
charge the airlines less for being there, and then hopefully they will charge you less on your ticket. Nice. So if this all pans out, we could be paying less. And I remember at one point there were a lot of airlines flying out of Ant, and then slowly they all kind of started trickling away. Uh, any likelihood of seeing them come back? Well, hopefully so, because we will be able to charge the airlines less. So then that means they'll be able to make more money. Um, Los Angeles was charging them too much money to land here, charging them cheaper to land at L.A. Of so course. it's a matter of a business sense to them. So hopefully we can reverse that trend and get those additional airlines back. I'd love that because, you know, there's few things that annoy me more than having to travel somewhere and having to drive, and I live like 10 minutes from the airport, having to drive to LAX to make the flight. <laughs> There's nothing better than leaving something behind and being able to go back and get it and still make your flight. <laughs> you make your flight, exactly. <laughs> and Ontario, I mean, getting in and out, I mean, it, it's not pleasant at any airport like, you know, like it used to be, but I've always said it, it's much better in Ontario than any of the airports I've been to. It just flow. I've always liked flying in and out. Oh, and I remember no, back in the old, old, old days before the new airport was built when it was a kind of a flying bus terminal. <laughs> yeah, where you got on on the outside, yes. Yes, yeah. you remember that? You had to sit and then you had to walk out to, walk out to the plane. Yeah. So we've only got a couple minutes left. My favorite event of the entire year happens in December, it's Christmas on Euclid, which is an event in and of itself, but then the nativity scenes that have been put up for, I don't know how many years. Since the uh, late 50s. Wow. Yeah, so. And I know you guys are always looking for volunteers, for support, because managing, maintaining, and storing those nativity scenes and putting them up and taking them down is no easy feat. And remember, too, this is a strictly volunteer nonprofit effort that has nothing to do with the city. So there is a nonprofit group that manages along with the convention center. They help us with, uh, but the convention center is also a nonprofit, too. So there's no city money involved in any of this. But we are now redoing the creches, the greenhouses that house the nativity scenes. And each one of those is going to cost us around $5,000. So we're looking to raise another $50,000 so that each one of the 12 scenes can have a new house. So if someone wants to donate or even volunteer, I mean, how the, par the work parties that you guys have, setting them up, taking them down. How do people find out about that? We have a Facebook page, uh, Euclid Avenue Nativity Scenes, and or you can go to christmasonuclid.com and you can look at the website there. All right, and you can make a donation, you can volunteer. Sure. And even if you do neither of the above, come out. Just like the, the Route 66 cruising event, you close off a big chunk of Euclid. And I'll tell you, I do a lot of my holiday shopping at that event every year. Well, we the, and the, they even give tours of the nativity scenes, too, where they talk to each of the crashes and how they were built and stuff. Like oh, that nice. Well, Debbie, it's been so wonderful finally having this opportunity. And please come back again and keep us up to date with what's going on in the wonderful city of Ontario. Love to. Thank you so much. We have more yet to come, so don't go away. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ewan, and I do the hair and makeup for Ron Stark and his guests. I would like to make you look and feel like a star all of the time. Come meet me at Studio M Salon and Spa in Upland. And if you mention this show, you can receive a free consultation and half off a haircut. I offer the best in makeup and formal styles for weddings, proms, and all of your special occasions, including special effects makeup, hairstyling, cutting, and color, hair and eyelash extensions, facials, and body treatments. So if you want to look and feel like a star, come see me at Studio M Salon and Spa in Upland. Give me a call today for your free consultation and half off a haircut at 626-589-3475 or 909-981-6800. Hi, this is Corey Chalmers, host of the TV show Hoarders and president of Steric Clean Inc. 5% of the population suffers from hoarding behaviors. Are you or a loved one overwhelmed with clutter? 
If so, let our caring and compassionate specialists support you every step of the way, drama-free. Give us a call at 1-800-HORDERS for a free estimate or visit hoarders.com. Stericlean has offices nationwide to assist you. Please call us at 1-800-HORDERS. That's 1-800-462-7337. We are here at Dermatex of Orange County, and they also have a wonderful office in San Diego with Nick Karagosian, who is our personal guru of hair. <laughs> and Nick, we've had you on the show as a main guest, and the information you had was so compelling. I wanted to have you back to talk about kind of the differences and options between surgical hair replacement and what is really getting popular today, non-surgical. Sure, sure. Um, hair transplants, um, I had done personally myself and they worked great for me for four to five years. But as my pattern grew, uh, I realized that I was running out of donor area and I had to find another solution. But transplants can work great, especially on someone that has a smaller area to cover. Um, someone with a larger area, it's a little more difficult because you, you, you have a limited amount of hair to take from. Plus, you know, I've heard, and maybe it's changed, but I've heard it's a little uncomfortable. So if you've got a small area, well, that's not gonna be as uncomfortable. <laughs> well, that's, and, and that's true. But you know, it's not so much, Ron, the discomfort of it. it, it's the disappointment if your expectations of what your final result is going to be is different than, than what occurs. That's the most painful part of it. It right. was for me anyway. Right, and if your area is still growing, yes. then you can literally outgrow your transplant. You, you can, which is what happened to me, but there's plenty. They, but, but on the other side, transplants today are done much better. Um, the, they're, they're, the surgeons are more skilled at it. They're getting much better results. Um, All so. right, but let's say you're one of those people that you've got a large area. Yes or the area is still expanding, mm -hmm. the non, or you just don't like surgery of any kind, okay. right. then there's a great non-surgical option, which is what you guys specialize which in. Which is what you're looking at with me, which is called virtual reality hair. And it's the, the latest innovation in non-surgical hair replacement. And it, it, can, it can give somebody a completely natural hairline and hair like they once had. It's and you can comb it back, and it's not obvious. Comb it you back can shower, and swim. Yeah, there's nothing that you're restricted to. It's human hair, um, and it's 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 just a great solution. So, Nick, if someone wants more information about virtual reality hair, how do they get a hold of you? In Orange County, they they can call us at 949-305-2661. In San Diego, at 858-457-5496 or on our website at dermatexhair.com. All right, be sure to call or check them out online at dermatexhair.com. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland is one of my favorite places to go for food, for drink, and for great entertainment. Located at 296 2nd Street in Old Town Upland, just north of the gazebo and just east of Euclid Avenue. This is a wonderful place with a broad menu, variety, great drinks, great fun, and marvelous people. They have weekly specials. These are my favorites. Check out their Monday night $5.99 steak dinner. How can you go wrong? They have specials virtually every night of the week. And then they have entertainment going on all the time, from trivia contests to karaoke to dancing to some of the best cover bands you'll ever hear on Fridays and Saturday nights. Check them out on Yelp, check them out on Facebook, or come on by and say you heard about them on Voice of the Inland Empire. I love it so much here. This is where we're shooting the show right here from the bar at Charlie's Stars and Stripes in Old Town Upland. Come on by any evening, who knows, you may just see me here having dinner and a drink. 
I so enjoy the Citizens Business Bank Arena. There is always something fun going on there. And if you want to find out what, check them out at their website, cbbankarena.com. Now let's take a look at the arena clipboard and see what is coming up next. Right now, tickets for the Ontario Fury Indoor Soccer League are on sale. Season tickets, last season we did great, we made the playoffs. I'm thinking this year we may go all the way. Then coming up September 9th and 10th, the Belong Tour 2016. The Belong Tour is a two-day experience challenging women to pursue their best lives. It is a call for women of all walks of life and faith to connect more deeply with their own dreams and purpose and within their relationships and communities. The tour will be headlined by a diverse group of highly sought after authors, speakers, and artists. Then on September 24th, Casting Crowns, the very next thing tour. It's been more than 10 years since the members of Casting Crowns heard their first single on the radio in July of 2003. Since then, so much has happened in the lives of each member, and along the way, God has taught them so much. Lead singer Mark Hall says, God is winning. He's changing the world. It may look at times like things are getting darker and darker, but they're not. Everywhere you go, you can see the light, and light wins. Then September 25th, my favorite Ontario Reign hosts the Kings in a black and white interest squad game. The Ontario Reign are the proud American Hockey League affiliate of the Los Angeles Kings. And they will play a black and white interest squad game at the arena with the Kings. Participants in this special black and white game will be comprised of players from the 2016 Kings training camp roster. And then finally, October 9th, the month of my birthday, preseason game, Los Angeles Lakers versus the Denver Nuggets. I love it when the Lakers come to Ontario. It's a matchup you will not want to miss. For this and so much more, check out their website at cbbankarena.com. What a great show. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and watching. And please remember to set your DVR so you never miss another episode of Voice of the Inland Empire. Or want to be able to watch 24-7? Then visit our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com where you'll find two years of current and past shows for your viewing pleasure. And while you're there, drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you, what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, and especially ideas for show guests. Now, guests have to have topics of broad general interest and be non-commercial in nature. Or if you'd prefer the more traditional means of contact, you can call our Voice of the Inland Empire telephone hotline at 909-746-8846. So until next time, this is Ron Stark reminding you to work hard, Find time for fun and always remember to give back whatever and whenever you can. Until next time, goodbye for now.